Hello. G'day. How are you? Dangerously well. Much better <laughs> that you guys are here. Oh, that's that's very kind of you. Thank you. What what does dangerously well mean? Is that is that is that <sighs> too, too well? You you feel like something might go wrong, or is it just everything's good and you don't care what might happen? I, I think I've never thought of it beyond just saying it because um, <laughs> by saying it, it sort of like manifests a positive feeling. Right. You know. Yeah. It just shows how really well you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm, my wellness is critical. Critical mm. levels of wellness. Mm. <laughs> uh, so we're at Rock City now. Yes. In Nottingham, you're on tour. Mm-hmm. Tour foot ninja is on tour. Yes. How's that? How's how's it? How's it all kind of been? Um, it's been pretty busy, actually. <laughs> uh, it's been good. We uh, have, what's this like day four or something? I think of the tour. So we're just sort of getting. Uh, adjusted to the time zone and we haven't yet organized the bus so everything's everywhere but um yeah it's been awesome sold out a bunch of the shows um couldn't really ask for much more apart from washing my clothes would be good i'm going to do that i was in germany a week before this doing music messer um so yeah i'm looking forward to going to the laundry that's good. I think I think we all in, we all await that day. Yes. So you had the new album out last year. Mm-hmm. So is this the first time you come to the UK playing this album? Yes, mm-hmm. playing this album. We've done one other gig, um, like a few dates. I think one in London and the rest were in Germany, um, and that was years ago, like mm. f- over four years, I think. Mm. So we've been mostly touring a lot in America. So it's good to finally get over this side of the world, and yeah, it's been been really cool mm. and the receptions to the, to, to the album how's, how's that been it, it must be quite intense kind of when it's building up and you know you've released it and it's kind of like you wonder how fans will receive it so so what's it been like is it kind of lived up to expectations and more or what what's yeah the... I'd say it's exceeded expectations you know like the people in the last um, if it, you know the last few shows or anything to go by um, it's been wild like people know all the words and mm. you know getting right into it so can't complain it's been mm-hmm. been great mm. And uh, what what's kind of on the horizon? So obviously you've got a lot of touring, as you just say, to do yep. now, and you've been on tour for a while. What is there more music coming soon, or what's what's the kind of scope, <coughs> scope for that? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we're working on new material at the moment, and um, going to finish obviously finish this tour, and then the idea is to try not to uh, leave it too long before the next release hit the ground running. Mm. So yeah, mm-hmm. what kind of what kind of process do you go through when writing is it, is it kind of is it like you know you're on your tour bus now might you just kind of write some bits and bobs now some some lyrics or whatever and then put it all together in a few weeks when you're back home or what's yeah how's that work? i mean we've got some sort of basic recording gear like i use a, a helix which i can use as an interface into pro tools on my laptop so i can pretty much um you know demo up something that we could use mm. like for the actual recording uh, anywhere so but yeah, it's just just finding time. It's weird, like um, load in. By the time you do load in and um, do the sound check, and then you know anything else that's going on, like the you're playing the show, and then it's three in the morning, and then it's like this. It's hard to yeah, yeah. find time to fit things in. So um, we just squeeze in as much as we can out of a day, and then see how we go. And what's your? I mean, obviously that the whole band isn't here now, but if you had to say a personal favorite between playing live so playing music live and, and recording it in the studio because they're two very different things obviously yeah which i should imagine give two very different sensations off both fantastic i'm sure what what do you prefer um i think live is more immediate you know recording's quite solitary so um i mean i love releasing stuff and then seeing people's reaction and and um experiencing it through their perspective i guess but you know, live is kind of a, a a very immediate sort of thing where you uh, get to see the reaction um, straight off the, you know, as it's happening. So, so mm-hmm. yeah, probably live, I'd say. Mm-hmm. I've got this annoying cough, so... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no problem, that's, that's fine. Twelve Foot Ninja, the name, that's mm-hmm. quite an intriguing name. And I, I did try and do a bit of research on where that came from, but I couldn't really find much. Tell me, where, where, where does the name Twelve Foot Ninja come from? <clears throat> so... 12 Foot Ninja um, came from, originally I visited Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum on the Gold Coast in Australia and there was a um, wax statue of Robert Wadlow who was the tallest man in the world. Um, I can't even remember how tall he was, I think he was 
almost nine feet tall or something ridiculous like that. And I read a little um, blurb that a sailor once tried to pull his leg off thinking it was a trick and he sort of swatted this guy away and sent him airborne like he was just such a massive dude. And um, so there's one part, piece of information. Then we were traveling past all the cane fields, you know, far north Queensland. To, I was doing guitar clinics and uh, we were playing that hypothetical would you rather mm. game. And I don't know, I came up with would you rather be a 12 foot ninja or the only person in the middle ages with like a machine gun. You know, I was thinking uh, Game of Thrones would be, uh, things would end a lot quicker if, if uh, you know, they had crazier yeah. weapons. Um, and then the guy I was with was like, so is the ninja um, dexterous? You know, does, does he, can he still use stealth? You know, I started asking all these questions. And then I went away and wrote a, a story about this 12 foot ninja and thought, you know, um, it would be a good concept to build on because it turned into quite a like a little novella kind of thing. I spent a lot of time on it, and um, and then thought it would be a good concept to build a band around, and the rest is history. So yeah, we've got some comics and um, a whole bunch of stuff that delves into that sort of mythology, I suppose, for for lack of a better term, of the twelve foot ninja. Um, and yeah, I'll be I'll be very interested to see what people think because it, often it, a name is taken at face value, and it's yeah. just like. But it's actually like a whole whole um, world, I suppose, we've created and a lot of the lyrics actually tie into all of that stuff and have done right from the beginning. So a lot of folks probably don't don't realise that, but yeah. Wow, that that's a big story. That's, yes. that's the best answer I've ever had to that question. <laughs> um, and do, do you find a lot of those kind of influences in, in music generally? So something you might have seen or maybe something you read or something you've watched on TV or something. Do you, do you get that a lot in songs as, as well as obviously the name? So mm. when when you're writing, there's kind of something that you kind of think, oh, yeah, that's I'll use that. Yeah, yeah. There's a track um, that came to mind when you were, when you were talking then that we've got called Clarion off our second EP. And I got a section of that from watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm. And it had this little... Um, sort of traditional Jewish kind of music in there and I just went that's a cool idea and then adapted it and then turned it into something else so definitely uh, grab um, inspiration from anywhere you can I actually uh, I really like there's a YouTube series called Everything's a Remix and it talks about creativity being the culmination of um, different things brought together in new kind of ways so it you know it argues that there's no new nothing really brand new it's just you know, mixing that with this, you know, is an interesting thing. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I've always kind of thought that. Um, one final question now. If you have one sort of musician or, or vocalist or whatever that is kind of the, the pinnacle, the kind of pioneer of, of music for you, so your favourite, just up there as a, as a musician as, and as yep. a person, one one person. Me it, personally? It, for you personally, okay. who, who is that? <clears throat> oh, that's an easy one. Cool. Uh, Mike Patton for me. Um, I'm I'm a huge Mike Patton fan. Um, probably the the um, out of the band, I'm I'm into Mike Patton's music probably the most. But yeah, I think I think he uh, and and the projects and the musicians that he works with, you know, have created some of the most innovative stuff um, of this generation and beyond. You know, he's uh, one of the most influential vocalists and. Uh, yeah, huge fan of his work. 